I was very nervous about the fact that I wasn't much of a painter myself, but then I right, was in okay. a, a at this company um, starting, just sort of starting to manage the artist side of things. Yeah, yeah. And then I'd have like Golden Demon winners texting me pictures and going, does this look okay? And I'm like, <laughs> hot take. I'm super, super uh, value painting around the table with my friends rather than playing a game of Warhammer. How the hell do I get past where I'm at now. How do, how do I get from here to that model that's in the cabinet or on the box? Like that, I couldn't work that out in my head. I think that's probably the biggest, the biggest growth that I've had and the biggest moment from in all my painting where I've had the biggest increase in sort of like what I've done. Like it is possible, <laughs> yeah. like with X amount of hours of work and, yeah. and they learned somehow to do this. So, you know, you can learn somehow to do this. Hi everyone, and welcome to Paint Perspective, the brand new podcast from the team here at Siege Studios. In today's premiere episode, we're gonna be talking about those light bulb moments that we have as miniature painters and things we heard that really clicked for us to help us improve our painting. Right, let's get started then. Today's yeah. topic, which is, what is the moment that changed everything and the way you think about how you paint? So as an example, going into this, mine would be when I first came into the Siege office for my interview, which was a long time ago now, it yeah, seems. Quite a while, yeah. <laughs> you guys showed me loads of stuff that he was working on, some amazing projects. But yeah. like the one thing that jumped out at me was that Harry Potter uh, Primaris Captain that you had. Yeah, yeah. You showed it to yeah. me and yeah. holding, holding that model in the hand because I'd never been to comps or anything before. So like you see loads of mental stuff online. Yeah. But like seeing it in the hand and that was the first time I'd ever seen a model of that quality like in the hand ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, oh my God, like I need to learn how to paint like this. And like... <laughs> It sounds stupid and like cheesy and like nonsense, but like I literally went home and I was like, instead of like coming away thinking about the interview, all I was thinking about was like that model and like painting. <laughs> you, didn't you paint one? I literally went home it. that night. You went home and painted. He went, it, didn't I went home that night. I literally like. I'm just remembering home, that now. As soon as yeah. I got home, I ordered the exact same model. I found the photos of it online, and I was like, I'm going to copy it at least to try. And like in a weird way, like even though like mine looked nowhere near as good as Matt's, like obviously. But just painting that, like trying yeah. that hard with a reference made such a change to my painting. And obviously like that's the foundation for how I paint now. Because mm. in I at that time I wasn't really painting heavy metal style. Like I was still doing edge highlights and everything. But yeah, yeah. So that was that was the thing for me. So yeah. I'm not saying there's necessarily like one pivotal point like that, but I'm sure you guys have been doing this for a long time, been painting a long time. Like I'm sure there's been one, if not multiple moments where like a nugget of information maybe from someone you're speaking to at a comp or whatever like yeah something just like clicked and it was like against the grain of what you've been doing before yeah, yeah. or just something that just hadn't occurred to you even if it's something obvious because you know you hear a lot of new painters like i'm sure when you're teaching like it's crazy how many people don't even know about like wet palettes and stuff do you know mm, what i mean yeah like, definitely yeah. yeah i think there's loads of little things that are, are, it's difficult to say one one thing personally i think um there's always been different moments then different things within those moments that have then created oh i can do that now or i've learned how to do that or i know how to do that now um i for me there's been a few i mean like oh, when i painted one of my gd entries which was a squad i put i literally approached it with the mindset of i'm going to do loads of stuff that i've never done before uh whilst combining that with painting smooth the sharpest neatest best i can and i think that for me it was probably the just getting the, into that mindset yeah yeah it was a combination of put, doing stuff on something that had such a high risk factor like because i i'm obviously doing it for a competition so i'm like right well i've got to do the best i can on i it. mean the usual approach of a competition is like play to your strengths right it, they say like this so, is not the time to test out that yeah, new technique. yeah yeah so right. i threw that right out the window uh yeah. yeah no i i i always always am an advocate of like um trying stuff that is hard because then you learn and get better as a result of that i think um and and with that combination of well it's for a competition and also i'm doing stuff which is outside my comfort zone i think i've got that for me that that's why that piece means so much to me that's why i've entered it so many times because i just just want to obviously try and get something for it because it, it was the biggest increase in my ability and skill in one thing i think yeah um uh yeah like you know doing freehand like a decent size bit of freehand on it um you know painting non metallic metal for the first time uh not massive amounts but obviously on, on uh, the freehand has non metallic metal involved within it um so uh, you know and, and again i i didn't just for, for me personally like I, I didn't just tackle that that specific article i didn't just tackle that individually i did go to one of my mates i got i'll say it, rich rich gray like literally I went, I went and sat with him for a day and literally said look i really need help 
um because i can't get my mind around it and and, and you know he's, he's you know amazing at freehand so but like com- combining all those things into 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 one piece and approaching it with that mindset of smoothest sharpest neatest best i can whilst doing stuff that's outside my comfort zone i think that's probably the biggest the biggest growth that I've had and the biggest moment from in all my painting where I've had the biggest increase in sort of like what I've done. That's, yeah. That's, that, that. So yours is like literally practical activity of, of pushing yourself to do these things is what changed it for you. Just like, yeah. Pushing yourself. Yeah. Yeah, anything. yeah. Yeah. Was there a moment like, cause mine is going to be a lot more similar to George's, I think, but, but, but is there a moment for you that was like really early on? Like what was the moment that was like, the difference between you painting something quite average to starting to be really refined and and painting really well or did you go in straight away and was just like did it just make sense to you uh i've always tr- I, I grew up trying to copy box art so i literally would see something on the box and obviously it's a photo so you copy it you try and copy as close to the rendition on the image as possible yeah so um so yes yeah, so i think i i, I always tried to emulate and paint that style because of what I used to see on the box art. Mm. Um, but at the same time, I, when I first went to Warhammer world, like decade, like uh, years ago, they had a, a, a museum of, of some sort. It wasn't anything what the, the same as what there is now, but um, they, they seeing models there in hand in a cabinet at that point is very similar to the, to the, to what you, you were saying mm. about, um, about uh, you know, when you saw that, the, the Harry Potter captain in the office, um, that's the thing I think you can't appreciate about Warhammer World is like, for me, like, especially from going to like GD for the first time this year. Yeah. yeah. Something about that piece of glass, even though you're like inches away from this model, like you'd be like <laughs> yeah. right here, something about that piece of glass being the barrier between you and a model. Yeah. I don't yeah. know why it changes it so much, but it really does. Like yeah. it really does. And you know that from seeing like projects in the office and stuff. Like, yeah. It's so weird how photos for one, like don't do models justice at all. Yeah. And two, like, I think even walking around the GD cabinets, like, and you can forget lighting and all that stuff, but like just seeing something in your hand in the same position as when you paint, I think that's more what it is. Like if yeah. you're sat at a table, look, appreciating a model. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you've got it, you know, in front of you in your hand and it's the same like distance yeah. as when you paint. I think that is a big difference. Definitely. Yeah. I, I think that, that you nothing, uh, well, some photos are very, very good and very representative of the model. And sometimes uh, you, you've got that middle point of the, of the of what it actually looks like and the photo can look better, can look worse. Um, but I don't, I don't, I think you're right. Like it, you, nothing beats seeing something in the hand. You don't, because it's painted by looking at it in hand. So you're never going to get a true representation until you physically see it. Like you're never going to, the camera will potentially shift a hue of a color or tone or whatever the case may be. So seeing it in hand is always an, an yeah. eye opener, always like, you know, and, and the cabinet is still good. There is that pane of glass and the lighting, et cetera. But yeah, it's, it's like the 95%, I would say, in the cabinet. Um, but yeah, like early on, going to going to uh, head office like, uh, before they had like a lot of the stuff that's there now like very i was very young um and actually seeing it was really eye-opening seeing stuff that i'd copied or tried to emulate from the box and then see the fo- the models that were then photographed for the box seeing those yeah. those in in hand that for me was massively yeah. eye-opening and i think was the it spurred me on to go oh right so uh, an edge highlight on the box is like this, but on the miniature, it's it's actually this refined. So then yeah, you yeah. come back and you're like, right, I know I need to sharpen that up or make it smaller or, or, or yeah. whatever whatever the case may be. Um, so yeah, so I think for me that was um, that was hu- hugely eye opening, and, and I think a very early early on early point where where um, I realised kind of like where I wanted to be um, yeah. as, 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 as a painter. What about you? What about you? I think as I say, mine's mine's a lot more similar to George's. I think because I, I so. Obviously, like painted Warhammer as a kid, as everyone does, gets out of it, has a break, um, and all that, all of that, and then probably about two years before I applied to work in the siege office, I got back into Warhammer. Yeah, yeah. But like, even as a kid, like I, I was never saw myself as like the a painter. Like, it, it take Warhammer away for, from it. Even like, I was never creative in that way. I was never like practically creative i was always like more like mentally creative so oh, i like, okay, like yeah. telling stories like writing like that sort of stuff obviously music comes with that so yeah. like i never sat there and painted i was never much of a like a an arty 
kid in that way. So when it comes to painting Warhammer, it was I just want I wanted to like game, and the painting wasn't really there as a big like push for me to want to to want to be better at painting. And I also just saw it as too much of a step. Like right, okay. too much. How how the hell do I get past? where i'm at now how do, how do i get from here to that model that's in the cabinet or on the box like that i couldn't work that out in my head and then going to the siege office for the first time again like same as george i think is for us it's like the first time we get to see that quality of model in person yeah 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 and it does become like a little bit more like I don't know, like reachable because it's there. Yeah. Like it's you realize it is just the same thing. It's the same model that you're <laughs> painting. Like it is possible. Yeah. Like with X amount of hours of work and yeah. and they learned somehow to do this. So you know you can learn somehow to do this. So seeing that in person and and I can't even remember what specific models that I would have seen when you, I walked you, in. You, we, um, well, we, you've seen loads we only we didn't stuff. have we didn't have a few like as many as we have like actually on display in the office now. But obviously, whatever current jobs we're in, and then now I've been there four years, so I've seen, Hundreds. I've seen every job that's yeah. come through the company in the last four years. Yeah, yeah. And um, that, yeah, that for me, I think seeing that in person and just being a bit like, and then also like having you like just there to be like, suddenly I had someone there who I was like, I could be like, well, like what you did with, to Rich Gray. Yeah, yeah. I could be like, well, what do you think of that? Like, how, you know, valuable feedback. Like, yeah, yeah. That's not going to happen. Not everyone gets that. No, no. I it's think strange this... as well how much you absorb like through like osmosis as well, isn't it? Like just being around, <laughs> <Yeah>. literally <laughs> just, being, like around just being around that many models all the time. Just some, just being around it. Oh, like, yeah. and suddenly, <laughs> and then I remember one day, I just, I just sat down to paint, and I just felt like it clicked. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I yeah. couldn't, and I was so relieved because I felt so like nervous about working at Siege, and then also not really considering really? myself a painter. Yeah, hundred percent. I, hundred percent. Like I, I was like. I I I was very nervous about the fact that I wasn't much of a painter myself. But then I right, was in okay. a, a at this company, um, starting just sort of starting to manage the artist side of things. Yeah, yeah. And then I'd have like Golden Demon winners texting me pictures and going, "Does this look okay?" And I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, "Okay, well, I get." I and then so. then you get into a whole argument about like. You don't need to be good at the thing. You just need to be a good manager. Well, I think that goes, but, yeah. that goes for any position within the company. Because like, obviously exactly, I joined yeah. the painting team first. Yeah. And I know from speaking to like, you know, I've been here for a while now, but I know from speaking to like other new guys who joined the team, it's like, even though, because it's like for everyone, it is a hobby first, isn't it? And even yeah. though I was like professionally painting for a little bit before I joined the company, that it seemed like such a massive jump and like the imposter yeah. syndrome being around yeah. like like joe said that. like all yeah. of a sudden I, i've gone from like just sort of painting the odd commission to like i'm in a whatsapp group with like 10 15 com Does like golden mean, yeah. demon winners slayer sword winners like i'm ch i'm out drinking with you know slayer sword winners <laughs> yeah. <at Christmas> <laughs> yeah and it's just it's just mental yeah it's yeah just mental it, no. that that is a big step and i, I think that like, i think we're obviously in like privileged positions in Very that way so, where, yeah. where we've been Very given much. that um like foot in the door almost just by being a part of the company and automatically being surrounded by all these people but i do think this industry is actually um way more open to that in general I yeah think, i agree yeah, i think definitely. i think the barrier think, to entry yeah like compared to other industries like arts and whatnot like yeah don't get me wrong it's like it, it's a fair bar that you've got to accomplish but yeah. like you know if you want to go and be an actor if you want to go and be a painter in a gallery in London or whatever, yeah. it's a it much seems, hard, hard it seems I just like an impossible like punt of luck. And like I think yeah. the one thing we've still got, at least for now, it being quite a niche community, is even massive artists who are, you know, big time or whatever. Yeah. You can probably DM them on Instagram and they'll probably message you. Back. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100 percent well, I, I, think I even the, think yeah. like like going to Golden Demon and stuff like that and just being if you walked past and you saw you know, someone, I'm not going to just name drop someone so that everyone goes and starts talking to them at, at Golden Demons. You but heard like, him, Matt. If you, if you, uh, <laughs> if you, if you, uh, I wouldn't recommend talking to Matt. Um, <laughs> uh, if you saw like a painter that you loved and they've won a load of, uh, you know, trophies and stuff like that, you probably could approach them and just like sort of say hi, maybe even like ask them, like, I've got my model here. Would you mind taking I mean, a look? Yeah. And yeah. More often than not, they'll be up for it if they're not busy and so they've got other things to do or, or whatever. Whereas people like, aren't they? You know, we're still at the scope exactly. where like 
because it's like a niche thing, they're like famous but in they're, that room. Well, they're also not. But, yeah, but they're also, they, the, you know, they're still, everyone's still very normal. Most I, I, people I, yeah. have I don't. Jobs whereas and, I think you know, the, the point I was getting to was like, if you compare that to any other like thing that I've tried to be a part of, like if you wanted to be a musician or something, you can't just like go to a festival and then go and talk to like, well, Bruce Springsteen and go like, can you give yeah. that a listen and let me know how you tweak it or something? Like, yeah, it no, you are right. You can't do that. But like, I, it wouldn't I, happen. I don't think you're ever going to lose that that sense of community and sense of. Uh, I hope not. But I don't, I don't think, know I don't that think that's that, going to scale think forever, will. James. No, yeah. I don't. I don't think they will, John. Honestly, I, I genuinely don't get me wrong. Think... The ceiling of of the industry of a professional painter is way lower than the ceiling of a musician. No, it, so like, yeah. I get that, but what I'm I'm saying is like it's just really cool that I mean we obviously had that extra boost where we could just we're we're surrounded by these people straight away. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but I don't I, I, as a as a general punter that goes to GD and with that mindset, I don't think or any painting competition, not not just GD, but I I, I don't I don't think that you couldn't walk up to somebody there and go. Hi, I love your work. I love what you do. Uh, you know, I love the reds that you get, or the the the, the way you do your non. Well, GD I, I, lends I, I, itself to that because everyone's kind of there for that reason. Yeah. So I do agree that, like, I think it will. You know, you've got it's got to start getting ridiculous before that's going to be a problem. I think if but you, I think in other events, like, you know, eventually, like, if it's just if it scales as much as like it seems to be going, like, I don't know if it ever will or like how far into the future we're talking now. But you know, eventually, it's going to get to the point where, like, like I said, like, oh, you can at the minute you can kind of DM most people and they'll probably get back to you. But is that still going to be the case when, like, I think you know, it, I think big painters have person. got hundreds of thousands of followers? Also, and just getting to, hundreds of, if not thousands of DMs. Just to everybody. clarify, like, if anyone has made it this far into the episode, if you do DM someone and they don't reply to you, they're not necessarily being like, <laughs> no, yeah, like yeah, yeah, they're not just ignoring. Well, I'm not just meant in the sense of like, you know, it's an achievable thing. Like, if I, yeah, if yeah, I DM, it can happen, right? If I, like, you know, yeah, DM some, you know, insert X artist here from music, you know, yeah. famous yeah. pop star. Probably not gonna reply. No. Yeah. I mean I, I know from 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 our Instagram, like obviously that we've got the following that we've got and, and we do get a lot of messages and stuff, but like I, I still try and reply to as many as I can. Yeah. Um but I get what you're saying. Like it 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 does reach a point whereby as maybe as the industry does get better and then thinking about it a bit more maybe more sort of like factually, um it will maybe one day get to a point where you do get so many messages whoever you are whatever size you are and it just physically isn't possible to to to, to even reply i think to that them. scales yeah. with content as well because yeah, like do, at the agree, minute yeah, a lot yeah, of painters agree. are that's the only thing they do they paint for competitions a lot of them have got other jobs and whatnot yeah yeah, yeah. but now like the gaps are getting bridged with content like so many painters now are starting patreon or youtube videos or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. and as you grow as a personality beyond you know just your body of work and yeah, people agree. start getting to know you and you you know, as you know, like being, you could be like mega famous painter within our bubble, but that might equivalent to like 30,000 Instagram followers. Whereas yeah. like being a big time influencer on YouTube is like, you know, we're talking about like millions of people. Yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah. So it, it scales, I think, as content starts to become more and more integrated with, you know, the painting side of, of the hobby and that scopes with competitions, etc. I think that, you know, the more people start doing content and start seeing this as an avenue for, you know, work, because I think, you know, as you, as we know, like it's becoming a job for more and more people. Yeah, yeah. I think that overlap might change potentially. Yeah, like, I've always I've always said like as it gets more commercialized, the industry it's going to open up way more opportunities for people. Like every other industry that's had that longevity of commercial nature to it, like I think that that is going to come with the industry, and uh, it, it's a completely different topic, maybe for a different different show. But like, but you are going to see it whereby it it. it it becomes more like that, I think, on, a, on a, as, yeah. as, as time passes. But I um, think just at the moment, it just so happens that the high end of the kind of, like you say, like the thirty thousand followers or something like that, is quite a big thing in in uh, for a painter. Yeah, yeah. So that's still a fairly manageable audience to have. Yeah. It just so happens that that's on the higher end of what you could expect in this community at the moment. Yeah. So yeah. when that does start to increase. If you look at painters that potentially are going, and companies that are going past the hundred k, hundred and twenty k, whatever followers, then it starts to become a little bit less manageable, and you can maybe not expect to to get a reply every time. But yeah. like, I, I still don't think that's a person. I don't think that's a thing on the personality or the person running the page. I think if they had the time and they could, oh yeah, it feels like everyone everything. in this industry wants to just talk about. No, I agree. I agree. Painting yeah, all definitely. The time. I think that it's um, a very easy. Like, it, uh, the, our industry is great for for just being able to speak to people about the thing that we're all communatively uh, passionate about. I think, yeah, yeah um, in all aspects, whether it's painting, the game, and whatever. Blah, blah, blah. 
Um, and I, I think just to tag on the end, like really, I didn't want to do this as my only answer because it felt, felt a bit salesy. But like when I first went on one of our painting courses, yeah, just getting like, I didn't know how much I would value like spending that time. Yeah, just having having something literally shown to me in front of my face. Yeah. This is how you do it. And then there's little things you can't absorb through a tutorial as well, I suppose, because you're just sort of seeing it like through the eyes of the painter. Yeah. yeah. Just being yeah. able to see little things like, you know, watching someone paint, as I'm sure you know from teaching a lot of courses, James, like you can't appreciate like how they're sat, how they're yeah. holding the brush, little, little it's small honestly, things that you can't appreciate through a tutorial. The thing is, it was honestly the biggest like eye-opening thing is to like i didn't realize i'd benefit that much from it and i feel like we hear that a lot from people that go on our courses and i'm not just trying to sell tickets to our courses like buy, buy tickets, tickets to our courses, courses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. although there are limited tickets available so if you're going to do it you should do it now but yeah. they're, they're, <laughs> there's not that many spaces left but yeah. i'm not saying to just go run out and buy the course but like i i honestly benefited so much from that like yeah. just just good and that could be just to fully caveat that that could be just like painting with friends or painting Correct. with a friend that I, you I know think... is a better painter than you having that in front of you and just getting that sort of advice it's one thing me like going into work and saying to you like what do you think of this yeah it's yeah. another thing to sit next to you and and you like show me what you Bits were doing on, on that let's like reel that. it back into the topic a bit so for we've had sort of similar answers in the sense of like you know the moments that changed for us was like you know seeing and appreciating high levels of work speaking to other people what do you think for you know the average Joe listening. What do you think the offensive. like equivalent? Take offense to that term. <laughs> the average person. For the average person listening, what do you think is like their equivalent, or like how can they get their foot in the door and maybe get a taste of that for themselves? So you know, say someone living in the states right now, you know they don't have Warhammer World on their doorstep. Yeah. Or you know, someone who doesn't have a big painting group, you know, a bunch of friends. I'm what do you think is the best say way? Something very controversial. I think. Go for it. I think hot I'm, take. Hot take. I'm super super uh, value painting around the table with my friends rather than playing a game of warhammer now i love playing games of warhammer i think it's a great way to uh, pass time relax to, uh, like chill out from work relax etc yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it stresses me out Tem Temp edition's coming it's going to be easier oh that but, does like, yeah, seem a bit yeah. more relaxed um yeah. but no what it, it what i would definitely say is that like um for me i would get more value that is it, you're saying obviously about warhammer world and uh like but seeing other people's miniatures or seeing other miniatures in the flesh there's always going to be one person in a demographic of friends that that paint uh that play this game that is going to be a more uh skilled painter so i think i would advocate having painting evenings with my friends around the table get some food in get some drinks whatever it is you want to obviously do um and sit around a table all painting together i'd rather i think that's a better way to spend the time than playing a game personally do you think as well that could lend itself nicely to like you know if it went if you all went in with the mindset of like you know not strictly going here as like you know work we're going to practice but like maybe you do pass models around like just rebound feedback off of each other so yeah definitely you know, if your friend's painting in front of you and you're both been painting for an hour you know you're still chatting you're still eating your food it's still fun yeah but yeah. maybe like you know at one point you swap and just like, oh, what, 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 do you, what do you think of this well, and, well I, I would say that if you if you've got a regular gaming night with your friends all you need to do is literally just do alternate it do one gaming week one painting week one gaming week because then the beauty of that also as well is that you can actually get your army painted you can get your army painted for your, for, your, for your games you know um, and then the week prior that you spent ages painting that character and you get killed the next week first turn so you know um i, I, I think the, the thing is as well like there's always a, just a, a even if you can't go all the way like we're saying about seeing models in person and stuff like that and yeah yeah look, there's a lot of people that come into this industry and hobby who um aren't particularly comfortable in social situations maybe they don't want to approach people and ask them for feedback and stuff yeah. like that i think there's still a there's still tiny steps you can take forward to that by like you know you can be in discord groups and chat with yeah, people. Yeah. you can be completely anonymous yeah but um, then you can just share you can photos still, you can share photos that's still a step closer yeah and maybe once you build a few like kind of friendships with people in those discord channels maybe you can do like a meetup or you meet at a shop or something like that you yeah. might be a bit more comfortable with it it all just depends on how how comfortable you are being social and stuff like that because to be fair i always struggled with like um i think the reason i benefited from it being in in the siege uh bubble so much was because i i kind of got thrown into a social circle that already existed yeah, within yeah. the within the painting yeah i never once went to like a warhammer shop or like a, a, a 
any gaming shop and just got chatting to random people. Oh, right. Okay. Like, unless they, me neither, uh, unless they fair, come yeah. up to me, I always was terrified that I like seemed rude and stuff. And I felt like it at like, I feel like it when we do conventions and stuff like that. And I never want to come across as rude. I'm just like, I can't approach people like that. So when I was like, um, going to gaming nights and stuff like that, it would always be with a few people that I already knew. Yeah. And I wouldn't be the one go I would see an army over there that I would love to go and look at, but I wouldn't go and talk to that person. So some people are, some people are like that. And I think you can always just move a little bit closer. Yeah, maybe it wouldn't bridge the feedback gap, but like maybe, you know, join a Discord group. There's tons of them. Join the Siege Discord. But, you know, even just doing it virtually, you know, even yeah. if you're not like, you know, on camera or whatever, even just being in an yeah. audio channel, you know, whilst painting with other people, because you're all doing the same thing, you know, yeah. just chatting about war, chatting about painting. Oh, what are you doing right now? I, oh, I, well, I'm just, you know, I actually doing find X. when you, when you, when you do that and you're in an audio channel or if you're in like a, a video chat with your mates, uh, whatever, while you're painting, because your attention is being split between the painting and also speaking to the people. And because the speaking to people isn't a visual thing, I find that I power through and get loads more done. Get the boring stuff done. Because you're done. Dis you're mentally distracted with the conversation. Time goes so fast. <laughs> yeah. But you still, your hands and, and eyes are still working on the thing. So you're kind of like, your mind is split between the conversation and painting. And I actually find I get loads more done when I have like a discord chat or you know a video call with a couple of mates or whatever or zoom zoom group or whatever i think i i find that helps me massively and i, I get like loads more done as a result of, yeah. of being in that rather than just sitting sitting on my own yeah. with an audio book on which is normal and i think normal it might other. it might not even be like the social limitations like i was saying it might be that you live in the middle of nowhere alaska and you, and you can yeah. still yeah you can still uh nowhere. Yeah, you can still connect to people in that way. If you've managed to stick around to the end, thank you very much for listening to today's episode. Please feel free to leave your comments below and share all of your mind blowing moments that you've had as miniature painters. And please subscribe, like, and share with all of your friends. Thank you very much for listening.